Hello, Leo viewers. I know I've been off for quite a while, but I'm back now. If you'd like to book a private reading, I'm still doing those. My email is dragonenchantress at AOL.com, and that email is right below in the description box. So let's just get into it. Whatever the cards have for you, whatever the cards want to say. I'm going to pull from this deck first, actually. What do the cards want to say? Just whatever comes out. Gift. Great fortune. Some of you are coming into money. Um, I feel like you have a career opportunity coming in or you have some type of profitable opportunity. For some of you, this is a spiritual awakening. This might be psychic gifts, intuition, maybe developing like clairaudience or clairsentience, uh, you know, basically development on your spiritual path. Expectation. Official person. Hmm. Main female. Message of concern. Wealthy man. Concern. That's interesting. Okay. Oops, sorry. Let me make sure you guys can see these here. So this first part of the reading seems to have to do with finances. I just paused it for a little bit to like really look at it and pick up on the energies. I feel for some of you, I do feel like this is a woman that wants to maybe someone that's jealous of you that wants to block you block your finances. But for the majority of you, I feel like this is conflicting energy. Because I just stopped and I pulled a, I pulled the five of pentacles, the seven of wands, and then the chariot card just to confirm this energy. But more than anything, I got this as as being kind of fighting with yourself more than anything. I feel like I feel like you have some type of gift coming in, but you're not it's like like look at this woman, it's like male or female, you know, just take it as it resonates. It's just energies. You know, psychic work is it's kind of like artwork. It's very creative, it's very open. It's, you know, you can interpret the words on this card that some people look at the numbers primarily. You can do a mix. Some people go by the book. You know, I just channel, so sometimes I'll look at the pictures specifically or I'll, I'll you know, they might mean different things to me in different readings. I just, I channel primarily and I look at all the cards together. But anyway, it, and I'm drawn to look at this woman and that's what I'm channeling is like I'm looking at her where it's like, you know, male or female, it's like you have this gift coming in. You have this like great fortune, this karmic abundance, this, it, it's like you've, you know, you're wrapping up karmic cycles and you have this abundance coming in. This could be in the form of money, of love, of you might have new career opportunities, multiple things here. And it's almost like you just, it's like this person is just like looking out the window, like they're pondering these opportunities. They don't, they don't know if they're good enough for them. They don't know if they can handle the responsibility. You know, with the official person here too, I am kind of getting like, I'm looking at how strict this person looks. Like this could be somebody that's in the military or somebody that just, just it's just like a certain type of mentality I'm picking up on. Is It's like somebody doesn't feel worthy of this abundance or they feel like it's going to come with too much responsibility. Because it's, it's almost like waiting for the other shoe to drop because I keep, we you have two cards that are about concern. So it, it's almost like somebody just, so we have main female message of concern and then we have wealthy man and concern. So I'm almost feeling like somebody doesn't know if, Somebody is afraid, basically, is what I'm getting, is that if they accept a certain blessing, that they're going to lose something else. It's it's kind of somebody that has a very limited mentality. I feel like this might have been, might be someone, whether it's you or the person you're dealing with, I feel like, you know, the person, the people that I'm channeling in this energy group, you might have been brought up in childhood with this kind of, you know, official person mentality, like people have to work hard for everything. Maybe like money doesn't grow on trees. You know, certain things are just too good to be true. Uh, question that, you know, don't trust anything. I'm sorry about that. So it's, it's almost like somebody is just, it's like you, you have this opportunity or you have this blessing coming in and, and, and it's like, you're not quite accepting it. You feel like it might be too good to be true. Or I feel like 
I feel like this is someone that's been through a lot of trauma too. So it's it's almost like you feel like if one area of your life is going well, then the other area of your life might not go as well. Like if you, you know, get this abundance of money or, you know, you get like a, a new career opportunity or you get promoted in your current career. It's almost like you, it's just like a too good to be true mentality. So you're like waiting for the other shoe to drop. You're like, okay, it, it couldn't possibly be this easy. Like I couldn't possibly have abundant, abundance to all areas of my life. So, you know, if I get this promotion or if I have this money coming in out of nowhere, um, you know, my love life is probably going to suffer or I might lose all this money. Or it's like thinking about like the worst case scenario. It, it's like someone's questioning this. Or I feel like for others, I am also getting third eye blocks because for a lot of you, I feel like this is money. I feel like this could be money and or spiritual gifts, basically like a psychic awa awakening, like a leveling up as well. And I feel like for some of you, it's like your spirit guides are trying to open your third eye. They're trying to open your throat chakra, your heart chakra. They're trying to balance you out. They're trying to help you heal they're they're trying to give you these psychic gifts basically they're trying to connect to you more and i feel like some of you have a third eye block now a lot of times our third eye becomes blocked if we see things that we don't want to see now this could happen in childhood too if somebody you know is maybe just very psychically open and there's just so much trauma all around them or if they see something really morbid that's that's a that's a big that's a big third eye block is is seeing things that are morbid th seeing things that are dark seeing things that are traumatic that really blocks our third eye because it's like we don't want to see those things you know what I mean like we don't want to be psychically open and pick up on that energy and feel those things so I'm getting this could be somebody that has you know for this energy group there's you know multiple people here of course but you know take it as it resonates but but it's it's like maybe in childhood you saw something really dark or maybe you had psychic gifts as a child and people told you you were crazy or people, you know, maybe you, you were imbalanced and people laughed at you or you, you just didn't know how to how to bring those psychic abilities into the physical world. So it's, it's almost like your spirit guides are trying to give you these psychic gifts, but it's, it's like you're, you're pondering it. You're not sure if you want to accept this gift. You're not sure if you really have faith in these gifts. You know, some of you are still holding on to those third eye blocks. It's like they're trying to clear the third eye blocks. And on some level, it's almost like you're kind of fighting your spirit guides to a degree where it, it's like you're you're trying to it's like you're holding on to the traumas or to the whatever it was that made you afraid to open your third eye in the first place. And for others, like I said, it, it's also I mean, it could be multiple things. So take it as it resonates. But for others, it's it's not just the third eye blocks. It's it's also money coming in and just abundance in general. The root chakra is really associated with, you know, manifesting in the physical world. So I feel like a lot of people in this energy group maybe have root chakra blocks as well that they need to clear up. I just feel like a major like chakra imbalance. So it, it's like it's good to clear your chakras to uh, listen to binaural beats. There's a lot of channels that I don't really trust, but good vibes binaural beats because you never know what like what those are programmed with but but good vibes binaural beats are you know that's one channel i trust meditative mind that's also a really good channel so you know you can you can listen to these binaural beats and sleep with them on and put certain intentions into them but but yeah either way it's like your spirit guides are trying to give you something you know money love abundance psychic awakening maybe all of the above and it's like somebody's just afraid of, of the responsibility. They're also afraid that, you know, maybe they have like a certain mentality. They feel like they, they can't handle that or they feel like they're not worthy of it. Or they feel like it's like this these people I'm channeling like maybe feel like, you know, they're going to lose something else. Like it couldn't be that easy. Like, you know, if they get all this money, they don't know if their love life is going to suffer or if it's like fear of the unknown, fear of the unfamiliar because you see this energy, it's like message of concern. And then it's like wealthy man, like somebody's, you know, you have like some kind of financial offer here, but it's like somebody's like concerned, like there's two cards about concern here. It's like somebody's like, no, like this, it couldn't be this easy. You know, it couldn't, it couldn't possibly be this easy. So it, it's, it's basically the message here I'm getting is, is don't sabotage. Don't sabotage yourself. Like you, you can have love, money, psychic awakening, abundance, like all of the above, you can have these things, you know what I mean? Like just, you know, find that balance. But, but yeah, it, it's, 
it's just a matter of believing that you're worthy of them and you know doing the the healing work clearing your chakras out and aligning with these things and you know not sabotaging yourself you know some of these people in this energy group there's like a lot of um subconscious uh subconscious patterns of uh, sabotage as well like you know perfectionism i think is one example of a subconscious form of self-sabotage because you know when we're in the energy of trying to make everything perfect it, it's like we don't realize that we're self-sabotaging but but it is because it, it creates these delays it's like it's never good enough you know what i mean like like if you're if you're always procrastinating but you're telling yourself well i have to procrastinate because you know, I'm not ready today, but I'll be ready next week if I do this one thing. And then you do the one thing, but you you find think of something else that you need to do first before you do whatever you need to do. You know what I mean? Like there's, it, it's just an endless cycle. It's just like, you know, you got to get off the merry-go-round at some point and just do the thing, whether that's, you know, whatever it is that you need to do. It, it's basically saying like, look at these patterns of self-sabotage, look at these fears, look at the... Uh, you know, where you might subconscious, like bring these things to light, bring the, the subconscious self-sabotage patterns to light and also get to the root of the traumas. Like I said, if, if your spirit guides are trying to bring you psychic gifts and maybe you had something traumatic happen in childhood where you saw something that you didn't want to see and now you're afraid to open your third eye, you know, look at that, look, look at, you know, dig deep and, and heal that, you know, if you saw something morbid, it, it's like try to, you know, heal that as much as you can and and you know and even if, even if you need to take baby steps that's fine but it's it's just kind of aligning with and accepting these gifts and realizing that you are in a safe space now that whatever you saw it's you know you are safe now it is safe to open your third eye it is safe to be in your power it is safe to have this psychic awakening um it is safe to connect to your spirit guides Feel like some of you might not trust your spirit guides like maybe you feel like they let you down or they weren't there for you and honestly I'm feeling more like that was probably I mean it, it, you know I don't know your experience so it could be it you know there's spirits have their own agendas you that's why you have to use discernment and and really carefully choose which which spirit guides you know who you're working with like I work with a lot of gods and goddesses and I, you know, I have to use discernment. I have to, I have to know who I'm working with. I have my own personal relationships with them. You know, there's some, uh, deities that I really resonate with that might not resonate with other people and vice versa. So you really, you know what I mean? Like you have to, you know, do what resonates for you. Um, and of course, always be careful because there are also darker deities out there that are not really very trustworthy, you know? Um, a lot of times people seem to think that like spirits can't lie, but it's like, you know, they can, they, they have their own agenda. So it's like, you have to kind of form your own personal relationships with, with these deities and, you know, know who you're working, who you're working with, uh, know what kind of spirits you're working with. But any, but anyway, and, but for a lot of you, I almost feel like it wasn't your spirit guides, like letting you down. It was you not listening to your intuition. I'm getting more of the energy of like, someone really being in their head a lot and like sabotaging themselves and overthinking and then blaming their spirit guides for that. You know what I mean? Like somebody who, um, trying to think of a good example, somebody who might've gotten like screwed over when it comes to like love or career or just someone who was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. And you know, this person's like, why did my spirit guides not protect me from that? And like, they were probably screaming at you and trying to get you back on track and you didn't listen to them, you know what I mean? Like you listen to that, to your fears, to your doubts and your insecurities. Um, you know, like you listen to your mind, you listen, you know what I mean? And, and it's like your spirit guides didn't do that. They, our spirit guides have a hard time getting through. Like if you're really in your head and you're just being stubborn and kind of adamant and you just think that you know exactly how everything is, um, then, it, you know, it's harder for our spirit guides to get through and communicate with us. Like we have to be kind of open to, you know, to the right energies, we have to really develop, you know, you, you've got to really develop your intuition. And it's a trial and error process, too, especially at first, you know, you're not you're not always going to get everything right. You know, it's, it's good to just not be too afraid to be wrong. Sometimes it's like even even really experienced psychics, you know, it, it, it's like we still have to like meditate and and 
you know, make sure like if we're getting a message that we, you know, we, you know, usually use tools and stuff to discern it and make sure we understand like the message clearly, you know. But of course, use grounding and shield, shielding techniques as you get into, you know, psychic work, opening your intuition, like make sure that you have that that stability of, of grounding exercises and, you know, protection, you know, shielding techniques, you know, cause they're, like I said, it, it's, it's almost like taking the blindfold off and there's, there's all kinds of universal energies out there. So it, it's like, you have to, you have to be aware of what's around you. It's kind of like, like with witchcraft, a lot of people say, you know, a lot of people think witchcraft is evil. But the thing is, it, it's kind of like, like witchcraft, psychic work, energy work. It's kind of just like taking the blindfold off and you become more aware of what's around you. And, and sometimes there are darker things around, you know, in the environment. Sometimes there are those energies that you have to be aware of. And it, it's not, it's not that the energy work caused those things, but it, it's more just that you took the blindfold off. And so now you're more aware of these energies that are around you. You know, and especially as you open your third eye, it's it's like you do have to, as you level up more and more, you have to protect and ground yourself more and more as well and really, you know, use your discernment and develop your intuition. But um, anyway, let me pull some more cards here, see if there's any additional messages. But yeah, basically, you know, even if you need to take it slow, start doing that and start start getting into that spiritual practice, start you know, trusting the spirit guide, you know, trusting your spirit guides, maybe opening your third eye, just even if you have to take baby steps, just, just kind of trusting the process. And, you know, recognizing that you're in a safe environment, you know, recognizing those patterns of self-sabotage and really taking your power back and doing what you need to do to get you know pushed past that let's see what else the cards want to say six of wands the fool queen of cups six of pentacles okay it's a lot of good energy actually you have a new start once you do this, because six of wands is, and I find it really interesting that it's right before the fool, because the fool is the first card of the major arcana. And the six of wands is all about public success, um, recognition, victory, uh, base, you know, letting yourself be seen. I also see this in this context as, as kind of just being your true self and putting yourself out there and, you know, being open and developing genuine confidence and, you know, aligning with those energies, going after the things you want. And I feel like once you get in that six of wands energy, that's when you have this new start and you have, you know, six of pentacles is, I feel like, it, you know, six of pentacles is about, it's mutual give and take, give and take basically. It's someone you're getting back as much energy as you put into it. And I think this is the message too that's kind of saying like with your spiritual de development or money, because some of you have this mentality where you're like, you know, like I was saying in that earlier spread where you're, you're like, I don't trust that, you know, this money is just coming out of nowhere or the psychic awakening is coming nowhere. And it's, it's like it's divine timing. I think that's what this card is trying to reiterate here is you know, it isn't out of nowhere. It's it's not just random. If you were always a psychic and then you started, you know, closing your third eye off due to, you know, trauma, seeing morbid things, then, you know, it's it's not like it's randomly opening back up. It's 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 like, no, your spirit guides have probably been wanting your third eye to open back up for a while. They've been trying to, you know, help you heal this for a while. It's it's like you're getting the energy that you put into things. It's it's like you're getting that mutual energy back. Or like with money, it's like some of you are, you know, it's like, like you don't trust it. You don't trust the blessings. You're like, where did this money come from? Where is this random abundance coming from? But, you know, the universe is basically saying, you know, it's, it's karmic cycles. It's, it's not random. It's, it's meant to happen when it happened. And some of you have put a lot of energy into things too for a long time. And I feel like they just haven't manifested because you've been blocking yourself. So it's almost like when you really take your power back and you develop this genuine confidence and you, 
you know, be your true self and go after the things you really want. And you have this new start and you're in this kind of, um, you know, this, this open energy. It, it's like, that's, that's when you have the, these blessings that you've been manifesting coming in. You know, some of you, I feel like try to manifest for so long and you blocked yourself for so long that you just kind of thought that you didn't deserve the blessings or that you weren't a powerful manifester or something like that. So it's it's almost like when you remove that block and these, these, you know, things that you've been manifesting come in all at once, it's like, you're like, oh, like, where did this come from? And it's like, you know, this, this came from two, three years ago when you were trying to manifest money, when you were putting all that energy into it and it just didn't go anywhere. It's like that energy didn't just go away. It just couldn't manifest in that present moment for whatever reason, probably because of, you know, your own mental blocks. And it's like now it's able to, you know, you're getting basically whatever energy you're putting in is what you're going to get back. So if you're putting this energy into to self-development, to, you know, to your spiritual practice, to working with your spirit guides, to learning, you know, protection techniques and shielding techniques then it's like that's you know you're putting that energy in and you're getting something in return for it but anyway let me see what else the cards want to say the mid yeah a lot of you actually have a lot of power to manifest you just haven't been in your power but when you actually are your true self when you actually are like feeling good about yourself like when you're in your true genuine energy like when you're connecting with who you are on a soul level that's when you actually are the magician like you actually are like it like a lot of you are probably watching this and you're like surprised by this you're like no I can't like manifest things like I've never manifested you know I haven't manifested this like life hasn't gone well for me or or this or that but it's like on a soul level you're actually yeah you're very you have a lot of power Ace of Swords is about clarity and communication. Let's get a few more cards to clarify, too. Page of Swords can be communication, too. Eight of Cups. The Hermit, the Nine of Pentacles, and the Four of Swords. Sorry, I had to pause. I got a really weird mix of cards because usually Eight of Cups is about like walking away from something. And it's just, it's interesting seeing it right after these cards that are typically about like, you know, clarity, truth, communication. I almost feel like some of you are like afraid of the power that's going to like I think part of you knows how powerful you are deep down and I think you're almost afraid of that like it's it's almost like you're afraid of being your true self or you're afraid of being in your true power uh, just because with the magician and the ace of swords here in the page of, of swords I it, it kind of feels like somebody who's trying to avoid making huge life changes is kind of what I'm getting. Because it's almost like you know that when you're the magician, like when you become the magician, when you have that leveling up and you have that new life, like there's there's a lot of changes that come with it. You're going to be seeing the truth. You're going to be having epiphanies, clarity, and you're going to have to walk away from certain things. If you want to be the queen or king of pentacles, you know, male or female, this is somebody who's who is abundant, who's financially stable, who's successful, who's well grounded, who's, you know, you. this is somebody who's just very, very balanced. And I feel like some of you are kind of aware that, you know, when this clarity comes in, it's like you're going to have, you might be in hermit mode for a while because it's it's like kind of like a fear of loneliness in a way, I guess, you know, because nine of pentacles is actually, it's a good card, but it's somebody who's very, you know, it's somebody who's single, but it's somebody who's like single and independent and successful. And four of swords is about somebody who's, who's healing, who's, who's recovering. So I almost feel like, the energies I'm getting from these cards is basically that you know when you're the magician, you have to walk away from certain things. So this could be toxic friends, toxic family members. This could be like toxic jobs, just things. There's certain things that were holding you back and certain things like like old patterns, old ways of thinking, old ways of being, old ways of viewing the world. 
you know, just like kind of a, like a tunnel vision. Like you have to walk away from that and open your mind up if people are holding you back and, you know, basically sabotaging you. Like if they're, if they're being abusive or if they're, you know, just taking and taking and taking and not giving anything back. Or if you have a job, that's just kind of a dead end job. Um, I just get that energy of like, basically like fear of the unknown and like, not like kind of not wanting to make all these huge life changes. It's like, you know, that when you're that person, you have to like move past certain things because you're not going to resonate with the same people like let's say you have a lot of toxic friends around you that like constantly put you down and constantly bully you or they're constantly like borrowing money and never paying you back or they're never there when you need them it's kind of like you know when you're in your power and you're really connected to who you are on a soul level it's like you're not going to resonate with those people you're not going to want you know what I mean like you're not going to want that energy in your life anymore you're not going to make excuses for them so it's kind of like, you know, avoiding having to go into hermit mode and having to go through that healing process. But honestly, this is inevitable because there is probably going to be a tower moment if you don't just do this naturally yourself. I'm sorry to be the, you know, to say it, but. But I honestly don't think it's anything that you don't already know. Like the universe is not going to let you. The universe isn't like asking you to let go of anybody that you truly love or anybody that's right for you. Like, it's not like that. This would be like letting go of somebody who like hit you or cheated on you or like letting go of a job where it's like you like cry before you go to work just because you're so stressed out and you hate your job so much or like letting go of like an old apartment where you like, you know, just you don't feel happy there at all and you just are sick of your apartment and you want to move someplace new. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's not life changes that you wouldn't want. It's things that you would genuinely resonate with and want for yourself, basically, you know, and it, it's better to just go with go with that and just make those changes on your own. Because if your spirit guides have to make those changes for you, it's usually not pretty. Sometimes they have, you know, much more intense, much harsher ways of doing it. Like, let's say that you have a job that you know is toxic and you're just sick of it. And like, you know, your manager is a bully and you're constantly like stressed out and having anxiety attacks and crying before or after work. Or you just feel like you're in like a dissociative state after work. Like you just feel numb. Like you're just like so drained from it. It's like, okay, would you rather quit that, quit that job and make those changes yourself? Or would you rather like get fired in two or three months from now? You know, like having your spirit guides have to make those changes for you. Or like if it's like a toxic like relationship with somebody that like hit you or abused you, it's like, okay, would you rather end that friend that relationship or that friendship and, and take your power back? Or would you rather like you guys get into an explosive argument and that just, you know, falls apart and there's all this drama? It's like, you know, your spirit guides want you to make these changes. They want you to be the magician. They want you in your power. They don't want you playing it small anymore. They want you to develop spiritually. They want you to be on you know, your, your path. They want you to be on your spiritual path. They want you to protect yourself and ground yourself and be in a good environment and be around good people. Like they want good things for you. They want you to finally be in a space where you're not sabotaging, where you're actually like open to, you know, blessings and abundance and, and love and good things coming into your life. They want you, you know, they want your chakras clear and open so it's, it's kind of like, do you want to get yourself there or do you want them to, to get you there their own way, which might be a little bit more intense? So, it, you know what I mean? It's like you're still getting to that same destination where I think you're going to end up spiritually evolving and becoming this magician. But it, it's just a matter of, you know, how you get yourself there. If, if you're if, if they're if you're going to do it your spirit guides way or if you're going to do it your way or maybe like meeting in between even, you know. And talk to your spirit guides too, you know what I mean? Like you can pray to them, you can talk to them, you can feel that energy. Even if you can't hear them, it's like you can still feel that energy. Um, but yeah, overall, I mean, the changes that are coming in your life seem very positive. It seems like, you know, there is inevitable, he inevitable healing that, you know, needs to be taking place here. What else? Oh, wow, this one ended up being long. Knight of Cups. 
They're also saying follow your heart. You know, follow your heart. If you want to build something, this could be a relationship that you're wanting to build with somebody. Like you're wanting to like fix things or you're wanting to like build something with someone. Like you're wanting to make something stable. This could also just be like a project. Like you might want to pursue something like artistic or with music. Or maybe you have like a certain career path in mind and you need like support. Like Three of Pentacles is about, it's about working like as a team. Like working with other people to build things. So sometimes this is in the context of a relationship where it's like, you know, you both parties coming together and communicating and, and, and fixing things and getting things on track. But for other, you know, other times it's also about like career or projects or things that you want to work on. So basically, yeah, you're being asked to follow your heart. Ten of Cups is like one of the happiest cards in the deck. Ten of Cups is like family, home, abundance, you know, true love, pretty much everything. It's like she had, you know, he or she has like the entire ten cups. Like that's as many cups as you can have. You know what I mean? Like that's and cups is about, you know, it's water energy. So it, it's like about emotions. It's about, you know, love, emotions. And so it's like this person, like if you're if you're following your heart and you're building that and you're you're working towards your dreams and you're becoming, you know, your true self and doing the things that really resonate with you on a soul level, it's like you're gonna be in that ten of cups. You're gonna have blessings come in a lot faster than you realize. And it's kind of just, you know. You being at war with yourself, Empress versus the Son of Wands here. It's, it's like letting go of that defense mechanism and allowing yourself to be, yeah, death is, death isn't a bad card. Death is about transformation. So it's kind of like a, like, like a death and rebirth process where you're, you're being asked to go through a major spiritual transformation so that you can become the Emperor or the Empress. Those are, the, the Emperor and the Empress are, are probably, I would say, the two most powerful uh, people in the deck, you know, that's the Empress is that that's all four of the, the Queens combined. You know what I mean? That's, that's everything. And yeah, you know, some of you are like, let me see here. Sorry. The tower. Like, honestly, this tower isn't scary. Like it's, it's it, like I said, you're not going to be asked to let go of anything that's actually right for you. So if you have people in your life that are good influences that, you know, you, there's that love there you're they're, they're not going to be taken away is what I'm feeling it's it's you're only going to be asked to, to to let go of things that are actually like like abusive people you know what I mean like somebody that hit you somebody that cheated on you somebody that's like people that do black magic on you or people that try to control you all the time and manipulate you and fuck with your head and make you feel like you're garbage you know or jobs that just make you unhappy like we were talking about or or, you know, you know what I mean? Like, it's it's not, it's a tower, like tower is like sudden overnight change, but it's not a bad tower. It's, it's a really positive thing. It's things that you've been wanting to move on from yourself. Like you've been wanting to let go of like certain jobs or certain like toxic people, but maybe you're like, well, I've known this person for 10 years. So, you know, I don't know if I can do this, but it's like your soul has been wanting to, to let go of that and to transform your life. And so again, like I was saying, it's this tower moment. It's like, are you going to do it your way or, or are you going to, are your spirit guides going to have to do it down the line and it's going to be much more dramatic their way. So, you know, it's, it's kind of up to you. 10 of pentacles, but look at, look at how beautiful that is. You have the 10 of cups and the 10 of pentacles. So 10 of pentacles too is, pentacles is about its earth energy. So it's, it's abundance, it's things in the physical world, like material things, it could be like money, mental stability, just I mean, like, just like, like, physical, like stability. Um, and especially when, when it comes to love, it's also 10 of cups and 10 of, pen, 10 of pentacles is pretty much just like everything like a very solid, stable relationship. So it's, it's kind of like, you know, the universe is saying like, this tower isn't a bad thing. This is something that you've been wanting, you've been wanting to let go of this toxic job or this to these toxic people or this toxic way of you know this like negative like self-sabotage or way of thinking it's like you've been your soul's been wanting to let go of these things it's not if you if you kind of relax a little bit because some of you are like in that seven of wands you know mentality where you're like oh my god like I can't let go of my comfort zone like I can't let go of what's familiar but if you do you're actually going to see what your spirit guides are asking for isn't like it's actually a really positive thing like if you were to slow down and meditate and really listen to your spirit guides, you're going to be like, wait a minute, like, oh, I do want to get out of my comfort zone. Like you, like they, they're not asking you, some of you think they're asking you to let go of certain things and they're not, 
You know what I mean? Like some of you are like afraid that they're they're just trying to take everything from you or they they just want you alone or this or that. But if you actually like stop and ground yourself and, and shield yourself and, and, you know, are communicating with them, it's like you're going to realize like this is a really positive tower. This is this is, you know, death and rebirth. This is like it's not as scary and bad as you think it is. You know what I mean? Like it's it's things that you want for yourself anyway. It's a really good tower moment. Um, you know, the tower, you know, it tower is it, it's like overnight change. It's like the tower just like crumbles and then there's. It's just very fast change, basically. But yeah, I feel like honestly, if you just listen to them, if you just get out of your head and ground yourself and listen to them, you're going to want this for yourself, actually. And then it's like before you know it, you have, you know, 10 of cups, 10 of pentacles, like everything. This is this is love. This is money. This is abundance. Like it's all kind of right in front of your face. It's just you haven't been like recognizing it or accepting it. Or you've been pushing it away or feeling like, you know what I mean? It's, it's like you're going to have a different perspective. And and yeah, you're, you're going to have this abundance. It's like if you, they're not, they're, they're going to replace things that you're letting go of too. So if you're letting, if you're like letting go of a toxic job, it's like you're going to have, you know, you have other financial opportunities around you if you just open yourself up to seeing them. Um, same like if you have like toxic friends, it's like, you know, you probably have like other good friends around that maybe you haven't noticed as much, but it's like when you let go of the toxic ones, you're going to have more and more good people come in. So it's it's kind of like just, just being willing to take that leap of faith and step out of your comfort zone and be the magician and manifest the life that you want and you can have all of it, love, money, success, you know. So anyway, I hope this helped you guys. And like I said, please like, share, comment, subscribe if it resonates.